Hey everyone, my name is Wedge and welcome back to our tournament preview series. It's been a while since we did one of these, so for those of you that don't know, this series is meant to help prepare you for the dangers of FNMs, Grand Prix, and any other MTG events you may participate in by analyzing Magic Online results and bringing you potential strategies you can encounter that you might not be ready for. Since this weekend is Grand Prix Richmond, which expects 5,000 modern players, we're going to discuss some potential modern decks you might not be looking out for. Before we take a look at these overlooked strategies, we'll give you a quick rundown of the most popular and successful modern decks this past week. We looked at seven events, including modern dailies and premier events, and took down the decks that top aided each of these. Out of the 56 total decks, Blue Red Splinter Twin and Blue Red Storm were the most popular. You've seen these strategies before, so this shouldn't be a surprise. Twin decks use Splinter Twin and a creature like Deceiver Exarch to make a bajillion copies of itself and kill you. It's a combo deck. Storm is also a combo deck, but uses the keyword Storm to stack a bunch of spells together and kill you with a gigantic grape shot or a crap load of goblins. Anyways, long story short, these are the most successful decks of the week. Expect to see these in large numbers this weekend. Twin and Storm only made up 13 out of the 56 decks the top aided. With four top eights across the seven events, Urzatron is starting to make a strong showing. Utilizing the trio of Urza's Mind, Power Plant, and Tower, the player creates large amounts of mana, then casts gigantic creatures like Emrakul the Aeon's Torn, Sundering Titan, and Worm Coil Engine. This strategy also lets players sink their mana into full playsets of Karn Liberated, All is Dust, and even Mind Slaver. The rest of the Urzatron deck is usually a combination of utility lands like Tectonic Edge and Ghost Quarter, along with important land tutor spells like Expedition Map and Sylvan Scrying. Urzatron has been around for a long time, but it hasn't seen success as much recently. This is exactly what these players want. They want you to forget how fast this deck can accelerate and just take over the game. One of the biggest advantages this deck has is the ability to build almost any kind of shell around it and have it still work. One variation runs Talaria West, Some Islands, and Counter Magic like Remand, Spellburst, and Condescend. Another variation, still Urzatron, runs Mono Green with Ancient Stirring, Sylvan Scrying, and Nature's Claim. You'll know if you fight against this deck because no other strategy is going to be rushing out Expedition Map or Chromatic Star, especially now that Eggs is dead. While they do create a stupid amount of mana, they need to use all of it. You can counter away most of their deck if you're running blue, just don't let them get to 15. Emrakul laughs in the face of counter spells. Blood Moon is okay against Tron, but even then, if they get enough lands out, most of the deck is colorless, so that doesn't exactly give you a complete lock on the game. Artifact Hate is okay, but it doesn't help deal with Karn Liberated or Emrakul. This is especially bothersome if you're playing something like Pod. You don't have a million ways to interact with their mana base. Running Hand Disruption via Creatures and Thoughtseize is probably your best bet. The strategy does have bad matchups. Storm does pretty well since Tron lacks Disruption unless you're running a blue variant, in which case it's a toss-up. Affinity and other hyper-aggressive decks have a chance at outpacing this, but if you don't kill it by turn 4 or 5, you'll probably be staring down an All is Dust or Worm Coil Engine. Minimum. Look out for this deck. It'll start gaining popularity if people don't remember it's a thing. Don't say I didn't warn you. The second deck we're going to look at is Hate Bears, an interesting variation on a white weenie strategy. The deck top aided three of the seven events we looked at this week. Typical white weenie rules apply here, first of all. Aven Mind Sensor, Lean and Arbiter, Thalia Guard of Thraven, and Aethervile all make appearances. In addition, there's a pretty heavy green splash for Noble Hierarch and Scavenging Ooze. Where this deck gets crazy is the rest of the creature base. Flicker Wisp and a Restoration Angel make sense, but by adding in a single Acroma Angel of Fury, it just gets hilarious. See, this Acroma has Morph, an ability that lets you play the creature face down for 3 colorless mana as a 2-2. You can then pay the Morph cost when the creature's in play to turn it face up. However, this deck wants to ignore that entire concept. Instead, it would much rather blink a Chroma when she is morphed, exiling her and bringing her back face up, because that's just the cheekiest interaction ever. Yes, that does work, because once they leave the battlefield, permanents can't be morphed anymore. Anyways, the deck is pretty straightforward. Essentially a green-white beatdown strategy, the Hierarch and Aethervile get your Blade Splicers and oozes out quickly. 
Lean and Arbiter, Thalia, and even Mind Sensor mess with your opponents in the most annoying ways possible. Then Restoration Angel, Golem Tokens, or a Chroma beat down hard. This might sound like a deck you've heard of before, but it's actually what you get when you put Zoo and White Weenie together. It's a weird amalgamation of both strategies into a hyper-aggressive, control-disrupting machine. It'll perform very well against Storm, Twin, and any other deck with Blue, at least Game 1. Leon and Arbiter turning off Fetchlands early game is pretty huge. If you find yourself against this strategy, I can tell you that almost half the sideboard is designed to kill Affinity and Birthing Pod. There's no hidden motivation in this strategy. Blood Moon is decent here but not great thanks to Hierarch and Aether Vial. Toughnesses are generally low, so Anger of the Gods is an all-star. Grand Prix Richmond is going to be an insane tournament. There's no doubt we'll see hundreds of different deck designs. Hopefully this preview helped you out at least a little. Magic Online can always shed some light on what people are thinking about playing. Good luck this weekend. As always, subscribe below for the latest and most reliable Magic the Gathering information you could ever need. This is the Manor Source. I'm Wedge. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.